Critic? What are you looking at? My next movie review called Blood Rain. Pretty bad, I take it? It's an Uva Bowl movie. Uva Bowl? Aren't his films so bad they cause people to bash their heads in with a sledgehammer? Uh-huh. After jumping out of a plane? Yup. After blowing up an airport? That's right. After crashing a car filled with explosives doused in gasoline while shooting a semi-automatic while going into oncoming traffic while singing I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy? Twice. Well, I can see why you don't want to review it. It's not the only reason. You see, whenever I do an Uva Bowl movie, there's a... tradition. Tradition? It's a long story. I can take care of it myself. Hmm. Hello and welcome to Atop the Fourth Wall, where bad comics burn. Sometimes a comic comes along where you just have to... It's time. Of course there was a Final Fantasy anime, and of course, it sucked. But even after the first episode... You guys are so dramatic. Uva ah! Bowl, the most faithful movie adapter of video games since the directing team behind Super Mario Brothers, returns with what many consider his crowning achievement of shit, Blood Rain. The movie, based on the classic video game, and by based I mean more gangbang and mutilated than a Game of Thrones character, once again demonstrates Bull's talent, if you can call it that, for cutting more corners than a paper snowflake. And if you thought Twilight was the worst disservice to vampires the world has ever known, it is, but this one's pretty bad too. So, let's not waste any time, this is- Ah, the Duck Critic! Oh, we have something we have to address first. The elephant in the room, which of course is him! But what did I do? Oh, you know exactly what you did! It happened a few years ago, the drama that was caused, everything that happened on Twitter, on Facebook, on everything like that, the betrayal of everything that we stand for! Roll the clip! You never went to Castleton! I dropped out, okay? This is Blood Rain. Dude, do we have to censor the lettering? Those two O's are looking pretty phallic. Hey, if the Aliens logo could get away with an I, Gina, I think we can let that pass. Wonder if the word special is code for blackmailed. I just assume most of Billy Zane's career is blackmail. We open up in... Actually, I don't know. They never give a location or a time period, so that's already two of the basic five essential story elements ignored. Hell, let's just throw Y in there too, as I'm sure most of this film will ignore that. As we see a team of wanderers led by Michael Madsen and his lion mane mullet. The main thing I noticed throughout this movie is it just seems like Michael Madsen is drunk off his ass through the entire film shoot. Seriously, he just looks so drunk and miserable, like they had to send a grip to his trailer and clean him up in a hurry, slap that ratty-ass wig on his head, and maybe get a few usable takes out of him. How long do you think it will take to get there? You must go back to Brimstone. This is what I've decided to do. The monastery has been attacked, and the eye is gone. You can almost sense the grip just off camera with a Long Island iced tea waiting for the scene to end and him to shamble over and take another drink. What do you have for us? I think I may have found something of interest. But one of them notices that the person next to him has little to reflect on. <laughs> I like you, Brimstone people. You never make a mess of the place. What have you heard? What might only be 
the tall tale. Moving on, I guess. No one even batted an eye. Is this like an everyday thing? When did killing a vampire become yesterday's news? Yeah, I don't care where or when you are, and again, neither does Uva Ball, but killing a vampire will never be a boring thing. Guys, guys, holy shit, you won't believe it, I just killed the vampire. Was it a Nazi vampire? Well, technically no, but... <sighs> oh, please, Cinema Snob, everybody knows that Nazi vampires are all the rage now. Yeah, what you did is like the Bing search engine of vampire killings. But he killed a family of six! Go away, Cinema Snob, I can't even stand to look at you. Okay, uh, I guess I can drop his clothes off at the Goodwill or something. You do that. Nope. We then see a carnival where a half-human, half-vampire named Rain, played by Kristana Loken, is dragged out as a sideshow attraction. So sensitive to water! The very touch of it burns her skin! Wait a minute, was that holy water? Nope. Then how the hell did it burn her? Oh, Link, Kara, this is the Stephanie Meyer age of vampires. You can make up anything. If you want to say water hurts them, even though it's not blessed, it's okay now. Yeah, if you want to say they in no way can fly, turn into bats, or do most of the cool things vampires do, that's okay now too. Oh, I see. And if people travel for miles to see one as an attraction, yet nobody turns their head if one is stabbed and violently decomposes in front of their eyes, it's, it's totally, totally okay. okay. Now I know. And knowing makes it even more confusing. But one of the other attractions, the amazing Candle Slicer, takes a liking to Rain and dreams of living in a better world with her. My uncle, he's a sailor, and he once told me of a place where people play all day, and the trees grow fruits in every color of the rainbow, and the sun sets, set the whole sky on fire. They got tons of popcorn there. There's cotton candy, mountains of it, and chocolate milk, and mountains. You're gonna have a field of alfalfa? For the rabbits. Without war and traffic accidents, for the sake of the human being. Doesn't it sound wonderful, Rain? We then cut to her... escaping? Wait, when did that happen? No, oh, I guess she was just dreaming. Does she always dream in Photoshop smears? <laughs> yeah, I need to be drunk to get through this movie too. Wait a minute, now she's back in the field. What the hell's going on? Is this a dream? A flashback? What? Frank Miller's time codes are more fluent than this. The three hunters come across the carnival where Rain was and discovers it's burnt to the ground. This is the work of a young vampire. We have work to do. Um, thank you for chopping off the heads of our dead people. And burning their bodies. She didn't mean to bite me. And stabbing our performers. I'm sorry, have you been helped? Seriously, do these people ever react to anything? Why does nobody care that these wackos are chopping up their dead and living cast members? Just another fad gone passe, I guess. Guys, guys, I just decapitated 20 corpses and stabbed an injured woman through the chest. No reason, really. I'm just kind of sick. Were they ninja decapitated corpses? <sighs> I didn't ask what their martial arts background was. Oh, snob. Everyone knows if there's any decapitated corpses we're talking about, it's ninja decapitated corpses. Does this guy ever wake up? They sneak without thought, man. But I have a thirst for blood that can't be quenched. Away with you, snob. You become more dated with every passing view. <sighs> Why won't someone help me? <laughs> Meanwhile, at Castle Brownfilter, we see Billy Zane dictating a letter to his daughter. Although we've had our differences in the past, I beseech you now to put away old grudges for the good of humanity. And together we will stop this madness and bring peace to these lands, your beloved father, etc., etc. And if you have any information about how to get this dead skunk off my head, it would be most appreciated. What do you think? A very compelling argument, Master. Oh, you are such a sucker. Bottom line, Lovejoy, fight her! 
His daughter in this movie is played by Michelle Rodriguez, and if you couldn't tell by her unbelievable resemblance to him, surely you could tell by her pitch-perfect, completely unmistakable British accent. Will you be opening up the gates to the thralls? Grave importance. You should not travel with her. We're growing weaker. I seek to feel secure. Be sure this message arrives. Ah, it's good to know those years at the Dick Van Dyke School of Accents paid off. You will secure the entrance until I return. Well, I, I, I have to be moving along. The Lord Mayor's guy stopped up chimney. We then see Rain enter a village where she comes across a female vampire hitting on a man, which clearly Rain takes as she would find her attractive and beckons her to come forward. Bow chicka wow ow! But a fortune teller sees the bit and run and decides for really no reason whatsoever to tell her the future. Most believe that your kind are merely legends, part vampire, part human. Generally, they're exterminated. You've hidden well. Yes, you've been displayed in front of dozens of people and killed off an entire carnival single-handedly. You're better than Solid Snake. There was a man. Kagan? Kagan's not a man, he's a vampire. And you are his creation. He killed my mother. Dumb fears are rarely a product of a happy union between a vampire and a human. You lie. So you mean your vampire father killing your mother was a happy union? Boy, somebody's in denial. Your father is evil. No, he just likes to drink the blood of Catholic nuns. He was mean to your mother. What man wouldn't disembowel his wife for spilling the sugar? You like to watch the porn stars? That is a lie! It is so obviously scripted. Who could be as stupid as Chum Lee? You are a fraud. A fraud! It's getting worse. I just bit the neck of a prostitute and no one seems to notice. Was it a zombie prostitute? What the hell is wrong with everyone? Meanwhile, at Hogwarts, we see Ben Kingsley, presumably paying off an LED TV, as Rain's evil father. He's just been told that Rain is off to get a magic eye, Good. sure, which is said to help get his attention. Oh look, a sailboat! Kill her. Let her find the eye or let her try, then kill her. Something you'll notice very quickly is that Kingsley's scenes are phenomenally short. Some barely even reach a minute. They're so short, I think he literally charged by the second. You could pretty much sum up every scene with, Are you evil? Yep. Just checking. Rain then makes her way to the monastery where the eye is said to be hidden. She finds a secret location which leads her to a door guarded by an overcooked Fester Adams. Look out! You nearly hit the camera! Good. Is this really the best security they could get? Just because he looks like a melting candle of Steve Austin doesn't mean his whack-a-mole method holds any water. Oh, door. Next, she enters a booby-trapped room that makes Indiana Jones look like a true-life drama. <laughs> they got their security system from Itchy and Scratchy! <laughs> yeah, right. I think we all know what would happen to her. But the dangerous water is suddenly released. Yeah, that's still a thing. As she absorbs the power of the eye, which makes her immune to it. Activating the water trap for the device that makes you immune to the water trap. Hey, here's an obvious question. What if the person getting the eye wasn't a vampire? I mean, okay, the whole vampire's melt in water thing is stupid already, but what if it wasn't a vampire that got it, though? What if it was just a normal guy? Would the water really be that big a threat? You have stolen the forbidden treasure. Now face the ultimate torture. Mildly annoying. Can you do my pits? 
But all the water, all the buzz saws, and all the giant guards are no match for their final defense. A polite man who nicely asks her to come with him. I suggest you follow me. Ah! Hold me. <laughs> it seems that you absorb the eye. Why do you protect it? Because the eye holds powers. Why do you think water no longer burns you? Still wondering how it hurts her to begin with. The human body is 60% water and blood is 80% water. Then how the hell No, no, is no, no, no Linkara, Linkara, you're thinking too hard about it. Just let it go. But, but it just doesn't no, add no, up! Linkara, just keep telling yourself it's Uva Bowl, man. It's Uva Bowl. In. It's Uva Bowl. Crap. They all belong to a long dead vampire named Billiard. He discovered a method to defy those elements that destroy vampires. So it's explained that the eye and three other separated body parts belong to a vampire who tried to perfect their weaknesses, and that if the body parts were all brought back together, it would make the most powerful vampire ever. One, if he managed to pull this off, then how did he ever die? Two, if they're so powerful, why didn't they just destroy the damn things to begin with? This movie is driving me crazy! Oh, come on, Linkari, you gotta calm down, man. I remember what we were talking about. Unmovable. In out of That's Out of it, you break! Ah, that did make me feel better, actually. My sinus cavities. But Kagan's men attack in probably the bloodiest and yet somehow not actually gory fight scene in movie history. The makeup is so fake and poorly photographed that it's barely worth the R rating. Look at this guy, he's cut in half but you can clearly see his legs standing up. Well, you don't know, maybe Wallace made him a pair of extra legs, like in the wrong trousers. Half of these guys don't even look that pained to be stabbed, they just look kind of annoyed like they've been in the makeup chair for 8 hours and just want this crap off. Oh, I guess. Where's the eye? Perhaps killing you will get you to answer my question. Rain gets knocked out, but that's of little consequence as we have more important things to focus on. Like, hey, it's been 10 minutes. Time for another five second Ben Kingsley cameo. Come closer. Don't be afraid. Yeah, all he's gonna do is rip open your neck and feed on your insides. I can see why Rain thought her mother and him had a happy union. And just when you think this is the most pointless celebrity cameo, take a look at who they got to play the owner of the vampire feeding house. Why do you come here and insult my palace with your stench? Is that meatloaf? Yep. Wearing a 19th century powdered wig? Yep. Surrounded by whores and giving a performance more over the top than a kabuki pole vaulter? Yep. <laughs> the mightiest of all vampires. Oh my god! This is comedy overload! We need time to get all our jokes together. Pen, paper! <laughs> we'll be right back. We just need time to get all of these jokes out and organize. <laughs> okay, so we have had plenty of time to put together our meatloaf jar. <laughs> so let's shake this up and see what we can get! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Wolfgang Amadeus Meatloaf. How is it he managed to find a role even more demeaning than bitch tits? Suddenly, his role in Spice World is looking like a step up. Just because you didn't wear women's clothing in Rocky Horror doesn't mean you have a perfectly good excuse to wear it here. We know you're prostituting yourself to be in this movie, but you didn't have to make it quite so obvious. It's midnight at the lost and pray to God not found. This movie sucks! Could use a lot more imagination on that one. Hey, okay, come on. We were reaching the end of the break. I panicked. Actually, they were just buying the clothes. It just so happens Meatloaf came with them. Meatloaf a day keeps the subtlety away. I still like this movie better than To Catch a Yeti. And finally, I would do anything for Bull, but I will not Here. Wait. 
But three little wigs from school are we! Break in and try to bust her out. They, of course, have to fight off some dangerous foes. <laughs> Uh, let's turn you around here, buddy. There you go. They cut up the guards and break open the window to make Meatloaf face everything under the sun. Oh, how nice! He did the Colossus yell before he died. So Rain explains her backstory, which was already explained, about how Kagan broke in and killed her mother. Hey, come on, I'm Gandhi. Don't you want to say you got with Gandhi? One of the hunters in particular, named Sebastian, takes sympathy on her as his parents were killed too. My mother was killed before my own eyes. My mother and father were both killed. Well, that's enough for me to start banging. Wait a minute, what? Yep, the fact that they both have dead parents is reason enough to apparently make vampire whoopee. How much screen time have they shared together? Well, let's see. <laughs> A minute. One minute together and they're fucking in a cage like horny canaries? Yep. Where the hell did that come from? That makes no friggin' sense. Oh please, who hasn't just met a person in jail, talked for only a minute, confessed his parents are dead, and humped each other's brains out in the middle of a half-open prison door? <laughs> I'm speaking hypothetically. So as they train her to be a member of the Brimstone Warriors, Billy Zane gets word of his daughter's actions. Hey, here's a fun game. Count how many times Billy Zane blinks in every scene. This land has become unsettled, Don Mysterio. The future must be held in the hand and vampire perfected. That is an invitation, by the way. That's nothing. Count how many times Michael Manson pauses in between every single line. You're an important part of the Brimstone Society. Pause. Your work Pause. defending the fortress Pause. is essential Pause. to our struggle and survival. Pause. And no one Pause. has ever questioned that. Pause. You Pause. are a leader. Pause. Rain is a fighter. Pause. I will take Sebastian. Pause. If it pleases you. Jesus, you're making William Shatner look like the Micro Machines guy. As our heroes go to get weapons for battle, Nothing but the best plastic, non-sharp swords Toys R Us could buy. Who would use plastic swords in the middle of a battle? Huh, I'll just get in my hands. We see Rodriguez has betrayed her clan and leads Kagan's army into their village. Bargain for freedom, or leave your children motherless as a brimstone martyr. Never. No. Oh, my bad. I thought we were doing a slow-mo scene. Maybe I should have pulled that out at regular speed. Rain goes after Rodriguez alone and defeats her while finding the other magic talisman. She finally rides to confront Kagan, and what's her ingenious plan to get in without getting herself captured? Take up. Getting herself captured! I feel like she missed a step there. But it's okay, because Mullet 1 and Mullet 2 have an even better plan to get in without getting themselves captured. Getting themselves captured. Has the film just given up? I mean, not that it tried that hard to begin with. So Rain's gonna be sacrificed with the talisman to make Kagan the strongest vampire in the world, or some shit like that. Honestly, if you still care, you should up the dosage of whatever you're taking. Not the dump here. Stop it! How dare you strike my daughter who I'm about to kill! So this is when Michael Madsen does the weakest and stupidest attempt at the guard sick man escape routine I've ever seen in my life. Thrall, my companion is gone. I don't know what's become of him. So the guy just walks in there looking for the magic disappearing prisoner, and of course he gets knocked out. This delivery is so bad I can't even tell if it's done intentionally badly or not. It's amazing. How could anyone possibly believe a lie so poorly delivered? My companion is gone. I don't know what's become of him. Guard, these pretzels are making me thirsty. I don't know how I could have gotten so hungry. Sure enough, the two guys that got captured taking on all the castle guards suddenly have no problem taking on the exact same guards again. Hey, it's Uva Bull. I'm surprised they cared enough to do it right in the first place. Well, I guess Madsen felt the same. He gets captured, killed, and, following the theme of the movie, couldn't give a rat's ass. My god, man, you're being stabbed! Don't you care? It's like he's barely awake! What would it take to get an actual emotion out of this guy? Here we 
Reason. After Sebastian gets stabbed as well, it's down to Rain and Kagan to duke it out in a sword fight with more dialogue than Monkey Island fencing. He's strong Rain, but not skilled enough. I would choose death over seeing you as my ruler. You're interfering with fate. Vampires shall rule the earth. As if your interests are no worth. I am rubber, you are glue. Sticks and stones may break my bones. I never did it in a prison! I'm just saying, it, it never happened. For centuries we've been cursed at the shadows, slaughtered by the fearful. You condemned me the day you raped my mother. Oh. <laughs> Ungrateful bitch. Touché? Ungrateful for what? Fuck you! Rain finally defeats him and the battle is won! Yay. This rose still had more dignity than the Mandarin. Please, please, you don't have to leave me. It's my time. Okay, can finish. But we had so much. Dead parents, jail door fucking. And then, in a very bizarre ending, even for Uva Ball, Rain takes the throne and thinks of all the times blood has been spilt in the movie. Me realize how many people apparently had red hoses buried in their bodies. Yes, we have a minimal one minute for romantic chemistry, a whopping couple of seconds for most of the villain's establishments, and yet over four minutes of replaying all of the film's goriest moments in slow-mo that we already saw before. At least he has his priorities straight? We hope you see now why you should never leave your kids around Uva Ball. As if this movie wasn't proof enough. If the sci-fi movie The Week is too good for you, then Uva Ball is the one for you. Everybody else knows that his movies bite it, and this one is no exception. His characters are flat, his writing ridiculous, and his stories never make any semblance of sense. And the fact that it has little to nothing to do with the original source material makes it one of the most laughably bad adaptations ever. What else can you say but... THIS, this movie, MOVIE SUCKS! sucks. Well, thank you guys so much with helping me for another Uva Bull review. No problem. My pleasure. Now get out! Fine. Why don't you just fly away? I can only do it once. <sighs> See? Was that so bad? No. It was worse. Well, what are you gonna do now? I am just gonna sit here and stare forward, thinking about the review I just watched, hoping I can trick people into thinking I'm more artsy than I really am. All right. Whatever does it for you. Wait a minute, I don't remember doing that. Like I said, Critic, once a stooge, always a stooge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you knucklehead! Become of him.